Brave Dungeon is a dungeon crawling RPG that released on the 3DS, Nintendo Switch, and Steam in 2017. This game is a spin-off of the Legend of the Dark Witch series created by Inside Systems released on the 3DS and PlayStation Vita. I'm confident in saying none of you have heard of either of those games, which is sad because both are really good. So let's get started with the Brave Dungeon review. When we start the game, we're faced with a giant pair of titties, I mean a blue-haired adventurer named Al. Something refreshing about this game is its lack of story. I know that sounds weird, but hear me out. I love RPGs, they're my favorite genre of game, but sometimes having to pay attention to a big story like in Final Fantasy or Fire Emblem is a bit of a problem. Some games have so much story, it's hard to know exactly what is happening all the time, especially if you take a break from a game. But Brave Dungeon doesn't have that, the story is super simple to understand. Al is an adventurer who seeks out to collect a very powerful magic item. Seriously, that's the whole story. No convoluted plot points, no confusing backstories, it's as simple as that. There is not much else to talk about in the story area of this game, so let's move on to the gameplay. The gameplay is very simple to understand. Like in most RPGs, you have to wait your turn and decide what attack to use to defeat your enemies. But you can't use your abilities as much as you want. You have a meter called Capacity, which is basically an SP bar. All your attacks use capacity, so you have to choose carefully what move to use, but luckily for us, the meter refills on its own, making combat more simple. Each character also has an ultimate ability to use during battle. And once again, this is also simplified, since the only way to use these special abilities is to take damage. It may sound strange, but it's actually part of the game. If you take a certain amount of damage, you'll be able to use these abilities. For example, Al can summon Ice Shards and damage all the enemies on the battlefield, Stodge can heal all allies, so on and so forth. Once again, this is a simplified way to implement some powerful abilities. The way you initiate combat is also pretty easy. Instead of walking around and waiting for the enemies to come to you, you find them on their own designated tiles on the floor. Which means, combat in some cases is completely optional. That may sound a little lame, but I think we can all agree getting randomly attacked by an enemy can be frustrating. But if you like getting unexpectedly jumped, you'll love New York. <laughs> Most RPGs have a class changing system, and Brave Dungeon also has it, but not in the way you're thinking of. Class changing gets you stat boosts and new skills, and if you're anything like me, you didn't know that existed. I legitimately finished this game using the same skills I had in the beginning. So, I claim to be the first person to complete this game without class changing. I'll take my trophy. The extra skills come in handy though. Skills like putting enemies to sleep or increasing attack power are pretty useful. You may be wondering what leveling up does in this game. All it does is increase your HP, but you need to reach a certain level before you can obtain the skills that I was talking about earlier. Since I said leveling up doesn't increase your stats, let me tell you how you do go about doing that in this game. There are a couple ways to increase your stats. One way is trading in materials you find in a dungeon for meal coins. And when you use a meal coin, a roulette type minigame starts. Depending on what you land on affects your stat growths. The other way to raise your stats is to use something called Tress. And Tress is important in this game. You need it for creating new materials so you can create new accessories. Oh wait, I haven't mentioned accessories. Accessories give you some good perks, like a high chance of acting first in battle or being able to use some attacks four times in the same turn. You'll be able to find most accessories in dungeons, but if you want the really high tier ones, you'll have to create your own with the materials you find. And trust me, you'll need those accessories when you reach the Nightmare Dungeon. After you finish the game, you get access to a new dungeon. The enemies are tough, there's no map, and every floor is random. To make things worse, when you die, you have to restart at floor 1. It may be tough, but I love when games give you a bigger challenge when you finish them. And speaking of challenges, I'm gonna try to get a girlfriend. Hey, do you wanna go out? Ew, fuck no. After finishing the game, you get access to New Game Plus and a list of challenges, like finishing the game under 3 hours, or defeating a boss without a party member dying. I think this is pretty cool, since some RPGs don't give you that much to do after you complete them. So adding some new goals in a new dungeon is a great way to give you a reason to come back. Overall, I think Brave Dungeon is a really good RPG. With its simplified mechanics, it's more accessible to people who aren't the greatest at RPGs. 
And I think that's what Inside Systems was going for. Making this genre's gameplay more simple is great for newcomers. Honestly, this game got me into RPGs. I remember trying out Final Fantasy a few years before this and being a little overwhelmed with all the stats and weapons. I was like 12 at the time, okay? Baby me is stupid. But Brave Dungeon was a great way to ease me into this new genre of games. If you haven't played this game by now, I think you should really give it a chance. It's only like $15 on Steam and the eShop, and I think you'll really enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it if you did it. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I will see you all later.